Welcome to Baker Day Presents. We're here in the Morgan Hall Kitchens at Temple University, and today we have a special episode because I'm going solo. I have no guests, just me. So you're gonna learn a little bit about me, and you're gonna learn about my grandmother, and you're gonna learn about her apple pie recipe. So without further ado, Grandma's apple pie coming right up. All right, so today I'm gonna to be making some apple pie. This, this recipe is very dear to my heart because uh, my grandmother recently passed and this might be the thing that got me into baking in the first place. I kind of, you, you know how when things happen in life and all of a sudden you remember stories from the past that maybe you didn't realize were in your head before, you're just, they're brought up by certain events. So I'm sitting there and I'm remembering the story of, I must have been six or seven and we have these apple trees out in the back yard of the house and I, they're inedible. I, they, I mean, they're the most disgusting apples you've ever seen. Basically, they're just there so that bees can collect it underneath the trees and, and cause me all sorts of stress. So I don't know what to do with these apples. My grandmother shows up to babysit one day and she's, she has me and my brother go out and pick the apples. And I think she's nuts because I don't know what she's gonna do with them. We bring them in, she tells me she's gonna make an apple pie out of it. I'm fascinated because I know what these apples taste like. They are not good. So the idea of turning that into an apple pie blows my mind. Uh, she was amazing in a lot of other ways too, don't get me wrong. So I don't remember what happened to my brother. I don't know if he just disappeared. I don't, I, all I remember is her and I making this apple pie. And the surprise on my face is I see this, like to eat this apple pie that's delicious and I know the apples are disgusting. You know what I mean? So every time I make apple pie, every time I smell apple pie, it brings me right back to my grandmother. So today I'm gonna show you a, a fairly easy apple pie recipe and some ideas you can do with that. Uh, what we're gonna start with is uh, the crust. So pie crust, a lot of people buy pie crust. It's not that difficult to make. Oftentimes they'll have, uh, chefs will tell you to use like a pastry cutter and they'll, they'll have you cutting with these knives and breaking up all these little balls and all this other nonsense. I hate pastry cutters. They, they clutter up my drawer and every time I open the drawer up, the thing gets caught and knocks everything else out of the drawer. I don't do any of that stuff. I do everything with my hands. I'm almost like a minimalist baker here. So we're gonna start, we have three cups of flour, we have a tablespoon of sugar and I have two teaspoons of salt. So I'm gonna dump that in the bowl first. Now, this is important and every baker is gonna tell you the same thing. I realize that shortening is, you know, trans fat, it's supposed to be this disgusting thing. Feel free to use lard if you want, which also has a bad rep. I have no idea why. Everybody loves bacon, they don't like lard. I don't, I don't get it. Shortening is what you use for pie dough so you can get a nice flaky crust. What's gonna happen is, is I'm gonna mix this shortening in there. Shortening has a melting point of about 115 to 120. Butter has a melting point of about 85. So what happens is you get these little layers of fat between your dough, so you have multiple layers there, and the, and the longer it takes for that fat to melt, the flakier your dough is gonna be because it's gonna leave a pocket in between all those different layers. And that's what you want. You want a nice flaky crust, right? So. At 85 degrees, the butter melts so quickly, it makes your crust gummier. Whereas 115, 120 degrees, your crust is gonna be nice and flaky, which is what we want. So we, we just toss that in there, and that is a cup of shortening. And we have a half a cup of cold water. The reason you want it cold is you don't want the shortening melting before you, you mix it all up. So you want this all to work out nicely. So you've got this mess in here. And as I said, I love using my hands, I literally, Use the flour to break it up with my hands and you're gonna see lots of like balls of fat. That's a good thing. The more balls of fat, the more better, okay? You, you don't want it to be completely mixed up. You want it to mix up quickly. So once it looks like it's, it's starting to mix up, I'm gonna ball it into a ball and then I'm going to set it aside so it can rest a little bit. I love, uh, one, one little side note here. Every time I, I, I do something with cinnamon, it, it reminds me of the, uh, the first time I, I worked in a baker. I used to work with this baker uh, in Ohio. And one of the things he had, he had said to me, which I, I thought was fascinating, is I guess where I figured out that smells have such an impact on your food. Uh, he suggested, he never did this because he felt bad, like he felt like it was kind of a, like trickery. But he had suggested that he thought it would be a great idea if we had a, bot, a pot of boiling cinnamon just rolling all the time so that 
the wonderful smells of cinnamon would go through, even if we weren't making anything with cinnamon in it, just so people would buy more food. Again, seemed like a bad, it seems almost dishonest. So here we have our dough, and it's not super mixed. It's definitely mixed uh, roughly, and there's definitely layers of fat in there. There's all sorts of stuff. That's what you want. So I'm just going to take this, and I'm going to set that aside and let that rest. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is, obviously, is uh, apples, right? So we're going to peel our apples, which are a pain, always. I don't know an easy way to do it. I hate peeling apples, too. But you have to do that when you're ready to use it, because if you do those way ahead of time, uh, they're bound to turn brown, which is a bad thing. All right, so I'm, we're back. I've peeled the, all the apples. I, I, I now know for sure why it is a punishment in the military to have to peel potatoes. Like, that's got to be the worst job. Today, we're, we're going to be using uh, Red Delicious apples. This totally goes against everything you hear. It goes against uh, other TV shows. It goes against every chef. Like, you never use a Red Delicious apple for apple pies. I guess my point is, is that I don't necessarily believe all that. When I had those apples that were disgusting from my backyard and they were turned into a delicious apple pie, it made me believe that anything could be turned into a delicious apple pie. Uh, the only thing you want to be careful of is some apples have a higher water content. So with apples like this that maybe there's a little bit more water in it, the sugar is going to draw the waters at water out and it's going to be a runnier pie, which is not necessarily what you want, right? Uh, the extra water when it's in the pie will actually cause your pie crust to be a little gummy. It'll kind of defeat the purpose of it being nice and flaky. So I'm just going to chop these up coarsely as soon as I get all the stuff out of the middle that I don't want. One of the things I do, and you'll see it here, uh, I like to use this bowl again. So you see there's a the little flour in there, a little bit of bonus stuff in there, what have you. When I cut these apples up and throw them in there, that little extra flour and stuff from the pie crust, that's actually going to help thicken the the inside of it. A lot of people will add flour to their mix when they're mixing them with the apples. And this way you really don't have to. The, the stuff's already there. So just a real coarse chop, not a big deal. Again, you can see by my knife skills, I'm definitely a baker. Don't hold it against me. Hopefully I don't take off a finger. <laughs> um, again, I guess uh, speaking on the apples, a lot of people will tell you that uh, Granny Smith's apples are good. They're delicious and they're great for apple pies because they have a nice tartness to them. So you can add your sugar to bring out some of the sweetness and the nice sweet tart taste is a good thing, I suppose. Uh, these are already sweet, so you don't have to add quite as much sugar. That's something else you're going to have to think about when you're deciding what apple you're going to use. I personally use whatever I have available because I generally want an apple pie now. I don't want an apple pie after I go to the store. I usually have apples, but not necessarily whatever special apple I'm supposed to have, right? Uh, I also don't bother measuring things like sugar and cinnamon because I do it to what tastes good to me and what fits best for that apple, right? So this is a fairly sweet apple. You don't need a lot of sugar. You're going to throw, basically cover it. You're going to throw some cinnamon on there, right? And we're just going to stir it up and let that sit. This is going to pull some of the moisture out of the apples while we're rolling out our apple pie, OK? So I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to set this aside. And then I'm going to start rolling out the pie. So we have our dough, and it's rested a little bit. We don't want to overwork it. So we're basically going to try to roll it out once and get everything we want, want out of it. If we roll it out a second time, it's going to be tougher because then you're mixing all the fat into it more as opposed to having nice little layers. It's not going to be as flaky. It's going to be a tougher dough. Uh, it'll have more of a cookie consistency instead of a pie consistency. I, as a baker, love using rolling pins that are flat like this. Not everybody has these rolling pins at home. Any rolling pin will do, obviously. Just make sure that the top is floured enough that it doesn't stick and roll it out as thin as you can get. The thinner you get it, 
the uh, shorter it has to be in the oven, the quicker you get to eat apple pie. So you definitely want to have a nice thin crust so that you can have a delicious apple pie. Once, see I'm turning it around there a little bit. I want to make sure it's nice and even and make sure that there's no, that there's flour on the bottom so that it still, it doesn't stick to the table because we don't want it to stick to the table. Generally, uh, bakers oftentimes work on wooden tables. It's not often I have to work on a metal table. All right, so basically I'm about done rolling this out. At that point, you're going to take your pie dish, and it'll help you decide what size you want to cut this. Today I'm making little individual pies because that's fun. Who doesn't love little individual pies? And you're going to cut it a little bit bigger than the size of the, the crust because it has to fall down into it, right? You don't have to grease it. You don't have to do anything with it. Just set it down in there and let it hang over. Don't worry about the excess right this second. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the decorative crust edge thing because I, personally I can never really get it quite right. It never looks as, I'm a bit of a perfectionist and it bothers me that it's never quite even. I'm going to cut out a second one real quick and set that aside. That's going to be my top. And then because we have so much extra dough here, we're going to actually kind of re-roll this slightly, but as you can see, I'm not mounding it back up. I'm just kind of folding it so that I don't overwork it too much. And I'm going to show you uh, something called a galette, and that is a free-form pie. Maybe you don't have a pie shell at home or that you, that you can use. Because again, when I want apple pie, I want it now. I don't want apple pie after I go to the store and buy a pie shell or a, a place to bake it in. So you don't need it. You can simply roll out your dough. And the great thing about it is, it doesn't even have to be even. It doesn't even have to be perfectly round. It can be whatever shape you want it to be, because it's a free-form pie. That's what's good about, you know, the French like doing stuff like that. It, it looks rustic, which is pretty fancy, right? So we're going to take, we're going to take our apples. We're going to fill this one up. As you can see, I'm mounded here. I'm really filled up high, right? That's because there's a lot of water in apples. After this bakes, that's going to come back down, and it's going to hopefully be about the size of the actual pie, which is what you're looking for in the end product. We're going to egg wash, which is just egg and a little water. And we're going to do that around the edge here, OK? Then we're going to take our top piece and we're going to lay that over the huge mound and attach it to where the other egg wash piece is. And then very simply, I'm going to take a paring knife and cut the edge. Okay. I'm going to put a couple of vent holes in it. This is a good thing. As the water comes out of the apples, it's going to create steam. And where's the steam going to go? It's either going to blow out your pie shell or it's going to come out the holes that you create. I suggest you create some holes for it. We're then going to quickly egg wash the top because we want a nice, beautiful color. And more importantly, I like sugar. And the egg wash will allow my beautiful sugar crystals, which I have over here, to stick because that makes pies even better. And of course, a little bit of cinnamon on top, right? Okay, so again with the galette, right? This is what's great about this is it doesn't, it doesn't really matter how it looks. We got our pile of apples, we're just shoving them right in the center, right? And then we're just going to egg wash the, outs the entire outside part of this, okay? Which is kind of cool. And then make up a shape that we find to be appetizing. 
So you, you're just gonna start folding stuff in. So it kind of resembles pie-like. So I definitely think back and uh, it's interesting how, see it looks nice, right? It's interesting how uh, you, you don't realize the things that inspire you in life, right? So you always hear these actors and actresses and they talk about how, uh, you know, I, I knew when I was five I was gonna be an actor or an actress. I knew I was gonna be in show business or like right now you're hearing this story and you're thinking to yourself, he knew at six he was gonna be a baker. Oh crap, what am I gonna do? You know what I mean? Like, how come I don't know what I'm gonna be? I didn't realize that until this year because the thought process didn't even kick in. So it's the whole hindsight's 2020 thing, right? So I, I didn't realize how much I loved cooking with my grandmother until she was gone. Uh, so you, you won't know what it is that you want to do with your life. And that's cool. It's, it's all good. It's all fun. Um, she did a lot of cooking. And what was cool about it is that I never thought of her as some great chef, but everything she made was delicious, which I guess was the point, right? I just didn't catch on to it. Uh, so I, I cooked a lot with her. I actually had taken time off after high school, and I didn't, I didn't go right into being a chef to go into culinary school. It took me a year or so. I'd, I'd played around with being in a band. I, I knew I wanted to do something fun. I didn't know what it was. I knew I couldn't sit at a desk. Those didn't work out. I ended up going to culinary school. I actually signed up for culinary because I thought that's what you did. Like, you go to culinary school, you must be chopping up meat and stuff, right? It wasn't until I got there, toured the school, school and saw people cutting raw meat in one classroom and then walk across to the other side of the classroom and people uh, playing with blown sugar and, and batters that they're scooping into muffin tins by hand. And I mean, I was like, That's, I, I don't want to cut raw meat, I want to do pastry. You know what I mean? I want to, I want to work with my hands, I want to make some beautiful art, I want to make some fun things that taste delicious. I want to make that apple pie like my grandmother made the, that apple pie. So again with this, it, it doesn't look super fancy. It's rustic, right? You see a little bit of the apples in the center. You got, you got to leave a little bit of space there. That's where your steam's going to come out, right? So you don't have to worry about uh, scoring this in the same fashion. Again, you'll egg wash it nice up. You'll drop some uh, beautiful sugar on it. A little bit of cinnamon just because it's fun. And then we're just going to take this, drop it onto our tray, and we're going to put it into a you know 350 degree oven. And I love saying this. Everybody gets annoyed when I say this. They ask how long you bake something till it's done. That's it. Till it's done. Like if you bake it, if it's 15 minutes in your oven, fantastic. If it's 45 minutes in your oven, that's great too. Like it needs to be fully cooked. Don't follow your recipe and say 30 minutes and turn the timer on and then turn it off and walk away. Feel free to set the timer for 30, 35 minutes, but it's probably not gonna be done. I don't know, it may be. Maybe you got a super great oven. I have no idea. So when it's done is when it's done. When the crust is nice and crispy, when the apples are tender inside, and then you have delicious apple pie. All right, I think the pie is about ready. How do I know the pie is ready? Because it's done, right? So what you're gonna look at Again, not a timer. You're going to see as you uh, break into the crust, you're going to see that it's nice and uh, done. I guess that's the word I'm looking for, right? It's got a little bit of flaky to it. To it. It's done. This is, it's got a nice color to it. I mean, these are all things you want to see. Nice bubbly that comes out of the thing, out of the holes. That's all good stuff, right? So I do not recommend you do this. What I'm about ready to do right now is you should not eat an apple pie steaming hot out of the oven. I love warm apple pie, but you're going to burn your tongue, all right? That's my safety message for today. But today, because I can't wait, because like I said, when I want apple pie, I want it now. I'm gonna, maybe that's why they use uh, a la mode, why they do like you know, the, app, the ice cream on it, to help cool it down a little bit so you can eat your apple pie quicker. That's really the important part anyways, right? So I'm just going to dig in there because I don't feel like cutting it and doing it the way I'm supposed to. And you got some beautiful beautiful apples here, a little bit of crust, beautiful, nice and crispy crust, that beautiful sugar on top, apples cooked perfectly, you saw how there's a little bit of a gel in there that formed up from that little bit of flour that I had at the bottom of the bowl, it's exactly what you want. 
So next time you want to make an apple pie, it's very simple. You usually have all the ingredients at home. It's very delicious. And uh, maybe you should think of your grandmother. Thank you for joining us here on Baker Day Presents. I'd like to put a special thanks out to my grandmother for her wonderful apple pie recipe. Join us again next time on Baker Day Presents. And remember, every recipe has a story.